Welcome to Inspired by Faith, a program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. I'm Emily Jaminette, and I'm joined each program in studio with my friend, Michelle Fanley. This is a show to help you to be inspired by our Catholic faith, live out the gospel message, and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. We hope the show provides you an uplifting 30 minutes to help refresh your soul and strengthen your faith. As this show is born of our friendship, we hope it encourages you to deepen and develop spiritual friendships with your sisters in Christ. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Emily. It is so wonderful to be here at St. Gabriel Catholic Radio today. It is. And to think that this is the keynote speaker series that we are working on. Even more excited for the yes, Women's Conference. Because this is my favorite day of the year, and we have some amazing speakers lined up, and we are super excited to introduce everyone to Father Michael Denk today. Ah, oh, what a gift. Father Michael Denk is the founder of The Prodigal Father, whose mission is to inspire, introduce, and guide people in a deep and authentic life of prayer. This includes leading them in intimate, mystical, and personal relationships with God, their Father, in and through Jesus Christ, and through the workings of the Holy Spirit. Father Dank is also an international speaker, author, prolific writer, and blogger. His books include Pray 40 Days and the Personal Relationship with God You Have Always Wanted and Pray Advent. Welcome, Father Michael Dank. Well, hi, everyone. I'm so glad to be on the show with you. We are honored to have you. And as I shared a little bit before the show, Emily and I are um, big fans of your work, and it's been so inspirational and helpful in our prayer lives. So we can't wait to introduce all of Columbus to you. And I can't wait to see Columbus. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we, know, we know you're an Ohio guy, so you're not far from us. <laughs> well, that's great. You know, um, maybe, Father, could you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself and your faith journey, and even maybe how, you know, God called you to be a priest? Sure. Yeah. My, um, so I'm one of six children. I'm from uh, Holy Family Parish in Parma, Ohio. And I grew up with, uh, with a very faithful family. We always sat in the front row of the church, although we were usually running very late because there were six of us kids. But we always had a front row seat there in, uh, in Mass. And I remember growing up, and one of the things that my mother instilled in me, my father too, my father used to pray with all of the kids, each one of us. He would come down next to our beds and kneel down next to us and take our hands and pray the Our Father and the Hail Mary and the Glory Be. And then we would say, God bless Mommy, Daddy, Michael, Jimmy, Christy, Sherry, Julie, all, all the kids we would say, and our grandparents and godparents. And um, But my mother used to take me to um, adoration late at night um, during the summer, especially when I was out of school. And that became a very uh, place for me where I, I just felt close to God. And I, I, I would voluntarily go with her and uh, just to be alone with God in that way. It was so uh, beautiful. But I grew up, um, I went to Holy Family grade school, and um, as I mentioned, there were six of us kids, so it was three boys in one bedroom. And we didn't really have, our, our, we, I had nowhere to be alone. And so I remember when I was young, I um, created this little prayer place in my closet. My dad and I built, built a bookshelf together, and I began to uh, to go there just to kind of get away and have a little bit of peace and silence. And um, when I was in second grade, one of the good friends of my family that they'd met after renewal came up to me, and she bent down, and she looked at me, and she said, Michael, you look like you'd be a great priest one day. And I remember when she said that, I wasn't thrilled. I looked down because... Um, I wanted to have a family, I wanted to be married, and I, I, I wanted my life to be fun. And priesthood to me did not seem like a fun life, and prayer didn't seem fun at the time. So I've come a long way since then. But as I grew up, I never mentioned that to anybody. But every time I would hear during Mass, uh, you know, um, we pray for an increase of vocations to the priesthood, and that would just, like, like strike me like a lightning bolt every time I heard that in Mass. And I was able, over the years, probably to push it to the back of my mind as I went to high school and then to college. And when I was in college, I had uh, my older brother actually was thinking about becoming a priest. And so he had told my parents about this, and when he told them, um, he was going to make this retreat at the seminary. So they asked me, they said, well, what do you think about this, you know, about your brother? And I said, first time I ever told them this, I said, well, I have, I've actually thought about this my whole life, and I think I need to make that retreat with him. 
So Bobby and I made the retreat together, and by the end of the retreat, I knew that I was supposed to be there, and he knew he wasn't. And the amazing thing is that he really gave me the courage that I don't think I would have ever had to take that step and enter the seminary. When I went into the seminary, I, I, I went in really and honestly with this intention. Okay, God, my life is going to be boring, and it's going to be miserable, but I'm going to give it to you because that's what you want, and maybe I'll get to go to heaven. And over the years, as I went through seminary formation and came to discover who I was, first of all, I mean, I really came into my own at the seminary, and through their affirmation and love and support and uh, wisdom, all of a sudden I discovered that, like, I'm, I was actually very gifted and talented, and I had no idea, uh, but also I fell in love with the idea of priesthood and the idea of being there for people and, and helping people realize their goodness and um, their gifts and talents. And so that was kind of my vocation story. It certainly goes a lot more um, in-depth into that, but that's a, a little brief overview of it. Well, thank you for your yes, because you are truly a gift to all of us, and your teaching on prayer is really important. And um, I know I love how you have written how so many of us, we never really get past that like second grade level of prayer in our lives. Yeah. We all know how to pray maybe the Our Father and the Hail Mary, um, and so you started this prodigal father ministry so to help people with prayer. So can you tell us what your ministry is all about and how you help them learn to pray? Yeah, thank you. And I talk about this more in the book that um, a lot of us learned how to say prayers or how to pray as children, but we have never really learned how to meditate or contemplate. So in the Catholic faith, there's three levels of prayer, vocal prayer, meditative prayer, and contemplative prayer. And uh, Pray 40 Days is a way to take you through all three, so that you experience talking to God, hearing God's voice, meditating, and, and contemplating. Now, I myself didn't know how to pray, and I, and I was somebody that was seeking and, and searching my whole life. And I remember when I went into the seminary, I thought, I better learn how to pray. So I went to the Catholic bookstore, and I got a prayer book, and there were just books of different prayers that you said, not realizing that prayer isn't just saying prayers. Prayer is actually this intimate union with God. And um, that began to open up to me very, very rapidly in the seminary. I had a, I would say it was a mystical experience. My first retreat I had made at the seminary, I was making a holy hour, and, and during the holy hour, um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know even how to explain it, but there, there was some point during the holy hour where I felt complete union with God, and and it it was it was so such a feeling of love and home and warmth and i don't know how long it lasted um but when it was over i remember feeling that's where i want to be forever i want to be in his presence and so that yearning has has always been with me and then i began reading about mystical experiences and the mystics and as they talked it was helping me put language to what I, the, the experience that I had had. And then it, my um, probably second or third year in the seminary, I had heard this, this um, there were this, this retreat called an eight-day retreat, and it was a Jesuit Ignatian retreat. I knew nothing more than that. I just heard that it was awesome, and I wanted to, I wanted to do it. And so I made my first eight-day retreat, and there was a wonderful Jesuit priest by the name of Father Bob Wells. She used to be the president of St. Ignatius High School in Cleveland. He's since deceased. And I, I have an interview with him. I actually got to record him uh, on, on his prayer life right before he died, a couple weeks before he died. So that's on the website, too. But he led me on the first eight-day retreat, and that's where I really began to learn that God is personal, that we have this three-person God in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and He wants to relate to us each personally. And so on that retreat, He, he came to know that I, I, I had a closeness with Jesus, but I didn't really have a closeness with God the Father. And a lot of times our experience of God the Father is is sometimes broken and related to our own images of God, our own, our own earthly fathers, or just the image sometimes that's passed down of God the Father in terms of being strict and judgmental and, um, you know, master and judge. Um, 
And I, and that was the image I had of God. So it wasn't a very warm or affectionate experience until this retreat when he told me to pray with Jesus and ask Jesus to talk to me and to tell me what the Father was like. And so I remember, again, I don't really know how to pray yet. I haven't really ever talked to God or heard his voice. I've just had these experiences of feeling his presence. And over the first couple of days, actually almost three days, I asked over and over, and I, I didn't hear Jesus' voice. And then one day, um, he could tell I was, the, Father Welsh could tell I was getting a little bit discouraged, and he said, well, go do something that you enjoy. He said, you know, what do you enjoy? And I said, well, I like playing guitar and music and movies. And he goes, that's it, go see a movie. And I said, a movie? I can't, I can't see a movie on my eight-day silent retreat. So he said, no, go see this movie. So I went and saw this movie, and I, I share more again in my, on, on the website, my, my, my story, my witness. But um, during the movie, there was this beautiful image of this father that takes in a child and begins to raise him and delight in him and care for him. And when the movie was over, I kind of thought, oh, I, I wonder, were you trying to say something to me, God? So I remember I got in my pickup truck, and in Ignatian prayer, you use your imaginations. And so I, I said, um, if Father Welsh, who was like 70 or 80 at the time, if he can imagine you and talk to you like this, I'm going to try. And so I imagined Jesus sitting next to me in the pickup truck, and I said to him, Jesus, were you trying to tell were you trying to tell me something in that movie? And I finally said it and I said, "Can you tell me, Jesus, what's the father like?" And that might have been the first time where I really asked it like he is real, Jesus, and when I said it to him, all of a sudden I could see his face. I could see him sitting next to me, but especially his face. When I asked the question, "What's the father like?" I looked over and he looked at me with the most delighted, excited, joyful face, as if, I, as if he's been waiting my whole life for me to, to finally ask him this question. And he went on to tell me what the Father is like, and he said, uh, Michael, the Father is so kind. The Father is so loving. The Father is so patient with you. He's so gentle with you. He believes in you. He hopes in you. The Father will endure with you. And as he's giving me these images, I'm seeing images of my childhood and some of the roughness there that I experienced. And then those images were being replaced by some of the images in the movie of the gentleness with this father and son. And through that half an hour drive, Jesus revealed to me um, this loving father. And from that point on, I wanted to get to know the father more and more and more. And that's what led me into the um, the prodigal father. I had read Henry Nouwen's book, The Return of the Prodigal Son, shortly after that retreat, and that book began to open my heart more and more into God the Father, and how how loving He is and how tender He is. I spent so many holy hours at the seminary. Then I would just go into the the seminary and pray with the prodigal son, Luke fifteen especially this phrase, while he was still a long way off, the father caught sight of his son, ran to him, embraced him, and kissed him. And I would sit in the chapel and let God the Father hold me for an hour. And that became really my prayer for many years, of just going to the chapel and and being held by God the Father. And so over the years, because I've come to know his love, my desire has just been to share that with, with other people. And so that really was the foundation or the spark for me of the father, the, the prodigal father. And it didn't come to fruition until my fifth year as a priest. No, actually it was my uh, probably seventh year as a priest. I was at my uh, second assignment, and they ha- had asked me to stay another year. And during that year, I, I, I thought, well, I'm, I'm here another year. And I was, it was very last minute. I had like a couple weeks. I thought I was moving and then I didn't. So I'd handed off all my ministries. I was totally free. And I thought if I could just give the people of this parish one last gift, what, it, what, what could I give them? And it was during that year that, um, the prodigal father was founded and, um, that I wrote pray 40 days. And that was kind of my, my final gift to that parish. And that's become really my um, passion now, 
is really helping people enter into this meditative and contemplative prayer so that they go from just saying prayers and and actually enter into this personal relationship where God be, God the Father becomes real and he's so he loves you so much he's wild about you where Jesus does become your best friend your most intimate companion where the holy spirit is flowing in you and you um feel the spirit and you sense the spirit and you begin to move in the spirit and so my uh continuation on since that years has just been to continue to develop these prayers and and resources to help people grow in their prayer life. So at the conference, um, I heard you're going to be talking a little bit about the exam and prayer. And I would say I found you because I, someone mentioned I should be doing the exam and prayer. So I just thought, well, maybe there's an app for that. So I Googled it and downloaded this exam and prayer app. And it was your app, which now is, I know, called the Pray app, which has a lot more included in it. And it's um, was really an in, it's an incredible tool to help every evening me to go through my day and to to pray in this meditative fashion. So can you tell us a little bit about um, the exam and also your app and your and some of your resources? Yeah. So first of all, so I did develop this exam and prayer app um, around that same time. So maybe a year later, and. Um, there was God blessed me with this this donor that provided for the entire app. And it was wonderful, and I got to I built it out and develop, mo- developed it more and more. But then we just discovered it was really too cost. Um, it was too difficult to develop apps for iOS and Android. So what we did is we shifted to what's called a web app. So everything is still available free. It functions just like an app does. But if you go to the Prodigal Father, you can go to the website, and then you would save that website as a shortcut on your your phone and device. So it's a little bit more cumbersome than I would like, but. Um, but um, that's all. That's all the funding that we have right now. So yeah, within that app, there's three things. There is the examine prayer. There's pray 40 days, and there's a journal as well. And I'm currently working on a Dis- discernment of spirits app as well. So to help people navigate the the, uh, the voices of God and the enemy, and to really live life in consolation, which uh, again was something I didn't discover until years in the priesthood when I made my 30 day. Uh, it, Ignatian Retreat, the spiritual exercises. So the examined prayer, which I'll be talking about at the Women's Conference, St. Ignatius, the, the summary of everything that he kind of puts together in the spiritual exercise is summarized in the examined prayer. And he says that it is the most important prayer that we can do during the day, that if we're to drop any prayer because of tiredness or lack of time or lack of anything, he would say the last one to go should be the examine prayer. And the reason is because the examine prayer really puts us in touch with God and helps us to see if we are close to God or if we have been become distant to God, if we are the language he would use in consolation or if we are in desolation. And a lot of times just by doing the examine prayer, by being aware of where we're at, if we're close to God or going away from Him, just by being aware of it, it can help us return to Him and grow closer to Him uh, by praying that. That's wonderful. You know, and Father, sometimes we hear the word examine and we get a little nervous, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, oh no. Like tough, right? <laughs> sometimes, you know, as a mom of seven children and Michelle's has four, like at the end of the day, uh-huh. you're like, I don't want to look back on my day like, (laughs) Lord, you know, it was hard. So what do you think? Am I, is that normal sometimes? What do you think, Father? (laughs) Very normal. And I mean, even if you said that to me, I think about that myself sometimes. As you said that, it's like, oh, yeah, your day is so confusing and perplexing (laughs) and busy and overwhelming. Um, But what the examine prayer helps us do is the first step, it begins with gratitude, and St. Ignatius would say, if we, if we do nothing else <clears throat> and go no further in the examine prayer, that's enough. And so just by looking at my day, and I, I do this, I do pray it faithfully every day. And by looking back at my day and just allowing the moments of gratitude to come forth, that very act of doing that begins to warm my heart and begins to allow me to settle with God. Prayer seems like a burden when our relationship with God is strained. And a lot of times we don't even realize it's strained. So if prayer seems heavy or if prayer seems like a burden, just so you know, that's probably a good indicator 
that that relationship might be in strain and that you may be in desolation. You may be distant from God because when we are in consolation, we love prayer, right? We love spending time with God. We love um, all of that. So the mere fact of just stopping and beginning with gratitude, and, the, and, the, and it, it begins with gratitude intentionally before you even move into the second step, so that your heart can be in the right place, that your heart can go before God and see that He is good, that God does love you, that He cares for you, that He provides for you, that you are good, and that you, you know, you've been blessed with many different opportunities throughout the day, or gifts that God has given to you, or ways that He has used you, that if we don't stop and and do that, would probably go unnoticed. It is a really beautiful way to spend your evening. And I can promise you, if you dedicate five minutes even to Mm -hmm. doing this a night, it is really transformative in your, in your prayer life. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think especially if you can journal and not journaling, it's probably easier for women, but it's tough for guys to do that just because it's associated with a girl thing, I guess. But um, all the saints and mystics journaled, and oftentimes as we journal, we're going to see God or hear His voice more clearly written before us. And so there's something really profound about doing that. Now, you may not, some, some nights you may be too tired and all you can do is close your eyes and just go through the steps in your head. But again, as you begin at least with gratitude, you're going to all of a sudden shift from the day being a burden to the day really being a grace. Father Michael Dank, I'm so excited for February 18th when you are going to be on stage at the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference sharing these key points. Because even as you're talking right now, um, you know, I feel my shoulders relaxing. I feel like, okay, he's right. You know, we need to always be grounded in gratitude. We need to be thinking about a relationship. I need to dust off my journal and bring it back, you know, to my prayer table. Like, you know, we all need those healthy reminders. And that's one reason why this keynote speaker series is so important because we want to fill, we want to fill the, the center. We want to fill the conference. Father, now there are some women out there that might be a little lenient. They might be, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I really need a conference. You know, could you speak to that, to that woman? Could you, you know, invite her or even share what you see the fruits of, you know, a faith-filled day gathered around prayer? Well, this is something that Father Welsh gifted me with on my first retreat. He said to me, Michael, you've given these eight days to be with God. God is going to be far more generous with you than you are with Him. Meaning that the sacrifice we make or the time that we give to Him, He is not only going to reward us as much as we did, but a hundred times more. So I think my encouragement for somebody and a lot of people think, am I going to get anything out of it? And do I have the time? And, you know, why should, why should I give up what I'm doing? And I think that's the promise that I could make in all sincerity, and I believe it wholeheartedly, that if you give him this time, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna reward you and bless you a hundred times fold. So, um, you know, if you're on the fence or not thinking, um, uh, you know, if, if this is something that you should do, First of all, you're going to experience him in this wonderful uh, group of women. Like, you're, what a rare, wonderful experience to know that you're going to go somewhere and there's going to be people that are going to love you unconditionally. And they're going to be women of faith. They're going to be women of joy. And so, first of all, you're going to be with, with this wonderful group of women. Secondly, is you're going to have these amazing speakers that are to to – to hear in person or see in person is quite the opportunity. It's something that um, very likely will change your life forever. Just as the encounters that I've had with some of the spiritual fathers that I had, that time or that moment that I spent with them changed everything for me. We are so delighted to be having you and honored that you're able to come. And be, you know, before the conference, women can take advantage of your um, pray. F- 40 Advent series, um, and just your get your um, homilies. So how can listeners find you? Yeah, so the best way is to go to the Prodigal Father website. So you can just Google the Prodigal Father or Google Father Michael Dank, and uh, it's theprodigalfather.org. And then on the main website, there's a, 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 a link to join 
that would be the easiest way is just to join that link and you'll start getting my homilies and everything. But I would encourage you, you mentioned the Pray Advent thing, so for me that's the next kind of thing that's coming up. I would encourage you if you click on Programs and then click on Pray Advent, you can join the Advent program. And what that's going to be is an introduction into this. Um, you're going to get daily guided meditations. And I tell people that if for nothing else, for 15, for 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to totally get to relax and be at peace and be guided through something. It's like you don't have to do anything. Just let let me do the work of it. Let the Holy Spirit do the work, and you're gonna you're gonna find that your heart will will move so close to Jesus, and you're gonna get to experience this um, this mystical prayer, this this growing and um, meditation and, and contemplation. Um, so that would be the first thing I would say to try. There's other programs coming up, like Pray 40 Days. There is the Examine Prayer that you could do as well, as, as I'm getting ready for that. I have a series on the Mass, uh, just how to pray with the Mass and, and get more out of Mass. Um, so there's a few programs that you can see there. They're all free, and they're all... My, my desire has always been, part of the prodigal nature is that God the Father gives freely. And even more prodigal than the son was because he wasted everything. God is really abundantly wasting his grace on us. He's wait, it's, it's there. It's there for the taking. So uh, it's free for everybody to take advantage, and um, then you can you can be guided in this wonderful life of prayer. So this really is my passion. It's what I've... I, I love priesthood. I love everything that I'm doing in terms of sacraments and confession and mass and preaching, but um, teaching people how to pray is really something that I, I love and feel very passionate about. Amen. And can you give us a final blessing here, Father? I would love to. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the Almighty Father, comfort you. May Jesus, who is the Good Shepherd, guide you along the right path. May the Holy Spirit come into you and give you the gifts of the Holy Spirit of faith, hope, love, joy, peace, wisdom, discernment, wonder, and awe. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today by Inspired by Faith, the program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. Uh, To find out more about the Women's Conference, visit columbuscatholicwomen.com.